Hi, I'm Tommy Wolf from the Bartitsa Lab and in this video we're going to be looking at wrist control. And we always take the piss out of Eastern martial arts for starting so many of their attacks like this, like this, like this, with the wrist grab that no one opens with. Now the thing with the wrist grab is no one really starts a fight with a wrist grab. What we do find is that mid-fight wrist grabs happen all the time or at least attempted wrist grabs happen all the time. Because when people are being grappled, they tend to counter grapple on the arms as opposed to the body. Obviously it makes more sense to control the body, but most people intuitively, if I'm grabbed, they'll grab the arm in some way. They'll end up in this kind of wrestle, this tussle. So once a grab's happened, we tend to counter that grab with another grab. Yeah, which is a bit stupid, if he's grabbed me here, he's offered me full opportunity to smash him around the chops, but that's by the by. We tend to grab what grabs us, we secure what grabs us. Or indeed, when we're being hit, and we don't like being hit, and we can't move, we tend to grab the offending limbs if we can, we try and snatch them so that we stop getting hit in the face, because no one likes being hit in the face. So, grabbing a wrist does happen, it happens all the time. It doesn't happen in the way Many arts train it to happen. We start the confrontation. Aha, sir, I have your wrist. Ah, the whooshy pinky hold. You know this hold. Yeah. But it does happen mid-fight. So I can understand its provenance and I can understand where people got used to it. So I get it. I get it. But why do we do it? Let's assume that you are the wrist, wrist grabber. What options do you have once this happened? By accident or design? So let's move through some of the arts. I teach Bartitsu, and Bartitsu is an amalgamation of wrestling, jiu-jitsu, boxing, savat. And when it comes to me, anything else I damn well please. Let us assume we've got this here. One of our first options might be some degree of arm drag or some degree of Russian arm tie here. So if we think of an option, let's assume I've got this cross grab, okay? Or indeed I've got this kind of inside bicep have gone a bit higher, but let's just go from across for now because it's easy for you to see. My wrestling response from Bartitsu might be to reach underneath his bicep, pull sharply down and manipulate where he goes. Boom! And move. So I might pull, pull him to allow myself the opportunity for something. So I might allow myself the opportunity to get him around his waist, to get double underhooks, or indeed to get around his back, whatever you may wish to do, but it will come from, as soon as I feel this is on, a wrestling response might be an arm drag, coming up on the inside, pulling sharply and diagonally as we move. So as we compress, or as we flank, or indeed we might just lock up in a standard Russian arm tie here, knowing that with my shoulder, I can wrench him. So with my shoulder, I can wrench him, oh! I can do stuff like this, or I can land pretty decent trips, throws, headbutts from this Russian arm tie. As soon as I've got this, as soon as I've got that arm tie, it's very hard for him to get his arm back. So if I've grabbed his power hand, or his hand that may have grabbed a weapon, as soon as I've got this here, it's easy for me to manipulate him with, his shoulder, with my shoulder. It's easy for me to strike him, knee him, trip him, and otherwise manipulate the man. So my wrestling response, arm drag and flank, or indeed Russian arm tie control, and I can use that for dirty striking. Manipulate and strike, manipulate, hit. You may wish to go a bit more jujitsu with it. And again, the whole point of bar titsu is options. So we've got a wrestling arm drag, got a kind of wrestling Russian arm tie, you may wish for a standard jiu-jitsu arm bar, arm lock. We may, we may kind of drive his elbow over. This is harder to show on a bob that doesn't have arms, but again, I can use my arm here, I can push on his elbow, I can drive him down, I can move in those concentric circles for which jiu-jitsu is famous. So with that wrist lock, again, I need to move, I can arm bar him, or indeed I can roll and reverse it. So I can apply figure fours from here. There are lots of different 
wrist throw options, but a classic jits response would be extend that arm, move in a circle, and drive down at the elbow, drive over at the elbow. You've got those particular options. Another option you might have, that bastard Bob, is once you've got this wrist, and let's say the fight is a bit more fluid up top, when it's down low, it's easier for these options. The grappling options, the Russian arm tie, the arm drag, you know, your ikios, your kimuras, whatever you want to do, those are easier to pull off when the hand's down low. When the hand's up high, it tends to be a bit harder. So if I've ended up in this tussle and I've got a wrist or both wrists, another technique I quite like is what we call in our club the unblockable elbow. I've got his wrist with my elbow, I can strike over the top. I can move his hand out of the way, bang, bang. This is perhaps the most frustrating thing in the world. Both wrists, elbow, 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 elbow. John Jones does this a fair bit. Wrist control into an elbow, wrist control into an elbow. You've got these options again, pulling, pushing, dragging, ragging, kazushi. But the unblockable elbow is an option from that piece of wrist control, so I quite like it. In its very simple form, you may just wish to rag and tag. So if I've got this grip or this grip, be able to pull sharply to get him off balance, to strike him is very important. Now, a very important thing to note from this is, if I stay in front of him and I've got his wrist, this hand will do everything it can to fight me, as will his head, as will his feet. With this wrist, if I pull and move, if I rag him somewhat, if I drag him, even if I move him a couple of inches, if I can turn to get more to his side, my ability to take out his jaw, bam, with something, it's much easier. I'm out of the threat of this zone, I'm off balanced, and I've maximized my striking safety, potential, and target area. I've gone from striking an inch of chin to five inches of jaw. So ragging this here and tagging it there. Rag, tag. And finally, and very importantly, you may wish this wrist control because he might be going for a weapon. He might be going for a weapon that's on me or a weapon that's on him. So the ability to pin and control that wrist to me or to him is vital. Now, I don't really care which is which. If he's got a blade and I've managed to get that wrist, if it's in the middle, I could get poked full of holes. If I holster this to me, if I really drive it to my hip, even though it's in his hand, it's harder for him to do stuff. I can be a lot more sticky, I can apply a lot more pressure to this and do other things. So whether it's, I put his knife in my holster, and using the word holster as representative, I'm not assuming I really have a holster, though you might do, I'm pulling it here, or indeed, I'm pushing it against him. So if I'm pushing it against his frame, or my frame, or his back, either way, I'm making sure that the knife isn't in flux. The knife hurts you when the knife moves. The knife's not moving, it's hard for him to disengage this once it's pressed to my body. It's hard for him to disengage this once it's pressed to his body. And it's hard for him to disengage this if I press it and drive it to a wall. I might start from the wall, drive it to his body, drive it to my body, and then control it. But either way, the ability to manipulate the wrist so that it remains in control. So once I've got this, I know where the weapon is, I can control it next to me, next to him, next to a third party object. Either way, I'm keeping myself relatively safe. And then, if you so choose, you can move into the other options that you saw, such as the arm drags, the arm ties, the hits, the knees, whatever you want to do, in some degree of surety that you've got this in a strong position. So, wrist control is hugely important, whether you're doing jujitsu, catch wrestling, even when you're boxing, to be able to pull, block, annoy, frustrate the opponent's hands at the cuff is really annoying for a boxer to deal with. So wrist control is important. And get used to being able to flow between 
wrestling style responses, jujitsu style responses, combative style responses, pugilistic style responses, weapon retention style responses. All of them start with a solid understanding of wrist work and why wrists are important and an understanding that these things just naturally happen. Grabbing each other's wrists doesn't happen at the start of the fight, but mid-fight, you betcha it can happen a lot. So, something to play with, something to think about, something to explore and experiment with. If you've got a bob and you've got a coat, you absolutely can play with a lot of options during lockdown.